In today's video we're going to be looking at uh, Squire's Dance Rustique which is currently on the ABRSM Grade 6 syllabus. This is a piece I really like to uh, work on with students, not only because it's great fun to play but also because there is so much in there that is technically really really valuable. So today what I'm going to be doing is to talk you bit by bit through I would say some of the key challenges um, in the piece and really and we'll really dissect those. Um, I will be doing lots of the demonstrations a little bit under speed um, obviously um, in order for you to get the most uh, out of it but um, in terms of what speed to play it at um, in the end I would say a good range would be somewhere between uh, crotchet equals 84 to about 96 with perhaps a slight relaxation in the middle. So we're going to get uh, started right away with um, our very first entry and um, this is really where straight away we need to convey this sort of very rustic character and in order to do that the first thing we have to talk about is the bow stroke. Now what we're after is it now you hear that especially the first two notes there have a real bite to them and I want to just spend a little bit of time explaining to you how to achieve that bite and um, how to practice it. We have to start from the string so it's really important that during these four bars piano introduction we we prepare our left hand, very important, and we place our bow on the string because that stroke starts from the string, very important. Now, how do we get this little, what I call the little pop, that... That. And I've got a little exercise for that, which I which I do with all my, um, uh, my students, which I call, I call it the jiggle exercise. Because what we do, I'll demonstrate it on the open string, we place, we place a bow on the string, we go through all our right hand, what I call the pre-flight checks, um, you can look it up, another one of my videos talks about nothing other than the pre-flight checks for the right hand, which are to make sure you're sat properly, your elbow is relaxed, uh, your elbow, your shoulder, and you are not gripping the bow. This is really important. You're, you're active, you're stable, but you're not gripping. So once we've done, we've made sure that we've got all of these right. Now you can see that all I'm doing is I'm moving the string left and right a little bit. So this is my jiggle without actually making a sound. So you can see here the string moves left and right a little bit, not up and down. That doesn't count. Only left and right without making a sound. And then you start moving your arm and what you get, you get the little pop. So, so start with that on the open string and once you're, you've got the hang of it, try applying it to simultaneously in the left hand with a bit of vibrato you will really get that lovely lovely character now we want to be using sort of lower half to middle of the bow on the string at all times with a nice sort of detaché stroke <laughs> semi-quavers that you use your lower arm for those not don't do these from the shoulder because otherwise that will take um, the idea of a rustic uh, a bit too far yeah so you don't want because that, that just it doesn't it doesn't give you any overtones it doesn't give you any color to the sound 
So if hinge from the elbow. Very, very important here, again, the wrist is very flexible, it's very supple, but it doesn't collapse either, so it's quite active and you really work in those semiquavers from your lower arm. One top tip for practicing this is work with the right hand alone. You may already have seen that in some of my other videos with regards to the technical work. Um, whenever you have something that's very sort of tricky in terms of bowing patterns, string crawl things, strip out the left hand. That way you work on nothing other than really making sure you're on the right part of the bow, you use the right amount of bow, your contact point is right, and you don't have all the other, all the left hand, um, left hand complications. And that applies to so much of this piece. Yeah, so that's something I'd, I'd really, um, I'd really recommend. Now, our first left hand challenge um, comes in um, in bound nine when we're having to really coordinate the left and the right hand with these shifts. Stop the bow, shift. And in practice, you need to exaggerate the stops. So your right hand learns not to play until the shift is completed. Stop, shift. Stop, shift. And you want to do that many, many times, really slowly with a big stop. Our next left hand challenge comes in bar 16 when we have got the big shift up to the A. So we've got Now, that's perhaps the first bit where you start to get a little bit um, jittery, but um, practice correctly, you should be able really to get that right every time. And here is how. First, I would like you to experiment with just playing that A and B flat and check out where your arm needs to be in order for you to feel fully secure, really, really well balanced. So you see, as you may have seen in some of my other videos, I always apply this trick. Can you rest the bow? on the arm, yeah? So nice long arm, really well balanced. So start with that first, find that position. Then we work backwards from there. So that is our target position. That's where the arm needs to be in order for us to really feel solid on that note. So that means that before we leave the C, we need to bring the arm into that position, to that level, yeah? So that's our elbow level. We need to bring it there before we shift because if you simultaneously try to shift upwards and bring the arm up, you will go off track and you will start slipping and the shift will go wrong. So, arm comes up, you've reached your target level with the arm and now you just let go. easy yeah and that really applies to any big shift always sort out the arm level be the target level before the shift and then you just release from the elbow here that's all the shift is you just go let it go our next um tricky bit comes in bar 21 when you've got these these open d drones <laughs> And there are two um, there are two challenges, one in the left hand, one in the right hand. First of all, in the left hand, obviously we need to make sure that that D octave is in tune every single time. Which by the way is generally quite a good left hand exercise. 
exercise actually to for your intonation to become reliable. Next, our right hand challenge here is um, using the correct uh, correct bow speed. Double stops in generally in in general do not like bow pressure. What happens is if you start squeezing, see it, it starts to sound quite nasty and it can also sort of play tricks on the intonation as well. So instead, use the speed of the bow for those. So use the bow really liberally here. So that's that would be my uh, my tip uh, for that. The next slightly tricky passage for the left hand um, comes in bar thirty two, when we have got. <laughs> To what I said about this shift. It's all about finding the right level here for the left arm. If you generally have a tendency in the fourth position to do that a little bit, when you then try to get over this hump here and go up to the B flat, you will find it really, really hard. So really for the whole bar, your arm should pretty much be at one level. So you only have to do that, going up and going back down. So see where my elbow is, it's not here, it's out. And then all I need to do is release. And there you are. So really take time to work on that because that's a general, sort of uh, technical concept that is very, very important. Now, let's take a look at the middle section. As I said at the start, um, you can perhaps relax the tempo slightly here because the character is a lot more singing, it's a lot more lyrical. So the section starts in bar 51 and make sure here that you really vibrate these crotchets and connect so they need to be beautifully connected in the right hand so very very smooth gradual string crossing and beautifully vibrated one uh, bit of advice i would give here for that whole passage for these whole next eight bars um, make sure your rhythm is absolutely tight there. It might actually help to just go through it tapping or clapping once because you're going from crotchets to semi quavers, quavers, and then you've got this little, um, this little demi semi. So just to make sure all your rhythms are correct, just clap through that once. Now, our semi quavers are slurred, so we need to be very, very careful about our bow distribution. That is very, very important that we don't run out. So really save, save the bow here. Um, it is that is really important and then of course we've got shifts in there as well so these shifts need to be incredibly smooth practice these practice these really really slowly challenge yourself to how slowly can you do that shift? Not how quickly, how slowly. So because the one thing you want to avoid is anything like that because that will really stick out. 
in the phrase and all the time really 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 safe for the bow. Now the next um, passage I'd like to talk about starts at bar 65 and it's not in some ways musically dissimilar to what you had um, at the beginning mm -hmm. Characters, so experiment with a different color here. Lots of vibrato, so really, really, really sing through those. Another thing I want to mention about this passage it's quite uh, heavy on harmonics, which you shift in and out of. One thing I observe a lot in my students is that they sort of panic that if they, when they leave the harmonic, the harmonic won't sound, so they shift really, really quickly. Trust the harmonic, it will continue to ring. quite scary about that you see as you as you just saw there we are all a little bit jittery when you when, when we do that but really train yourself to, to shift really 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 slowly don't worry about that harmonic it will continue to sound for as long as you really make sure you keep the bow moving. Now the passage from um, bar 90 to bar 96 is another one where you just want to be sure of your arm position. Now let's take a quick look um, at the coda um, which starts around uh, about um, bar, 100 and, uh, bar 112. Again my first tip here would be make sure you really nail the rhythm down yeah especially as you start to get those uh, semi-quaver uh, triplets so make sure you're able to you're able to tap or or clap through it that is really 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 important this just leaves us to quickly talk about the last two bars these two big chords and there are two bits of advice I would give you. Um, one relating to the left hand, again make sure you really have the support of your whole arm. Keep the arm really 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 long and experiment with where exactly your arm needs to be placed for, for those chords to be in tune. So you see that where exactly it needs to be will be slightly different for each person depending on your on your hands but the main thing is that you're really 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 well supported because to play chords the strings really have to be down you really have to have to squeeze a little bit here yeah and the the other thing is um in the right hand uh, make sure you start from the string and you break them you obviously you can't play um three or four strings together at least not with a nice sound quality so on the first one we are going to play the lower two notes so you're playing the middle string twice you're playing lower two upper two on the last one it's two and two lower two upper two and then that all gets squashed into always starting from the string. Now I hope this has been helpful. Uh, if you like the video um, smash that like button and uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, there are lots more videos uh, coming all the time now of um, different pieces and as usual if you have any questions uh, please post them in the comment section and I'll get back to you.